Today on Six Sister Stuff, I'm sharing with you 10 of the best cookies that you can make for Santa. Now growing up, one of our traditions was we always had homemade cookies waiting for Santa as he came down the chimney. So today, I'm gonna show you 10 of our favorite cookies that you can make that are pretty simple, pretty basic, but taste amazing. So if you guys are ready, let's get cooking. Now the first one is our mom's chocolate marshmallow cookies. Now it's so simple, you're gonna start with a chocolate cake mix and just dump it into the bottom of your bowl. Next you're gonna add one third cup of vegetable oil. Next you're gonna crack two eggs and just dump it into the bowl. Then just start mixing it together. I like to start with a whisk and then at the end I like to use a spoon because it gets thick. Now it's time to start rolling it out. So I roll it into balls in about, oh, one inch size balls. Go ahead and fill up. I did 12 cookies on my cookie sheet. You're gonna bake these at 350 degrees for about five to six minutes. When it's done, you're gonna pull it out and put your marshmallows on. Now we wanna melt the marshmallows a little bit, so we're gonna put those back into the oven for about two to two and a half minutes just until they're really soft. You can make them golden brown if you want. Now I'm making my favorite frosting. I'll put the link down below in the description for you for my frosting link, but you can use whatever frosting you want. Then you just spread it right over top of your marshmallows. Now I'd wait for these to cool just a little bit or yeah, it will be a little melty. The second recipe is our mom's delicious no-bake cookies or she likes to call them gorilla poops. You're first gonna start by adding two tablespoons of butter. You're gonna melt that over medium high heat on your stove top. Then you're gonna add a half a cup of milk and then two cups of sugar and just dump that right in. Now we're going to mix this all together just so it doesn't burn on the bottom of your pan. Next add two tablespoons of cocoa powder and then you're gonna add just a little bit of vanilla. So it's about a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of vanilla. A little bit of salt and then go ahead and mix that all together. Now once that starts to boil, go ahead and pull it off the stove top and you're gonna add 3 fourths cup of peanut butter. You can add creamy or chunky, whatever you prefer. And then mix that in until everything is nice and smooth. Next, add two cups of instant oatmeal or quick oats while your chocolate is still hot because we wanna be able to mix that really well together. Once that starts to dry, it's gonna start to harden up. So we want to do it <laughs> while it's hot. Now I love using cookie scoops when I scoop out these cookies because then I don't have to burn my fingers and they're all nice and even and proportional and you, you get what I'm saying. I like to scoop them out on foil so the cleanup is nice and easy and then you just let them dry. Once they're dry, they harden and they are absolutely delicious. Next up is our brownie mix cookies. You're first gonna start with one box of brownie mix and just dump that into your bowl. Next, you're gonna add a fourth cup of flour, two eggs, and then on top of that, you're gonna add a fourth cup of vegetable oil. Now go ahead and mix that all together. Now, it will take a minute just because there's not a ton of liquid in there, and it's a brownie mix, so it's nice and thick. So if you need to use your hands, you can do that too. Once it's mixed pretty well, you're gonna add about a cup of M&Ms. Now, you can use big M&Ms or mini M&Ms, whichever ones you want to do. Again, I'm using my handy-dandy cookie scoop because. It just makes things a little bit easier. I have a special helper with me today doing that. Now you're gonna bake them at 375 degrees for about seven to 10 minutes. So watch them, make sure they don't burn. When they're all done, you can pull them out. And I like to eat them when they're nice and hot. The fourth recipe is our four ingredient chocolate Rolo cookies. Now you're gonna start with one box of devil's food cake or chocolate food cake if you can't find devil's food cake. Go ahead and add two eggs to that. Then you're gonna add one third cup of vegetable oil. Then go ahead and mix that together. Now I started with a whisk and then I went to a spoon because it gets a little thicker and a little harder. After the spoon, I literally went to my hands just to finish mixing it up. Go ahead and push that aside. Now it's time to unwrap the Rolos. You're going to take your unwrapped Rolo, which is very important, and you're going to cover it with a little bit of the dough. Roll it up and then put it onto your cookie sheet. Now I fit about 12 cookies onto my cookie sheet. So you're gonna preheat your oven to 350 degrees and cook it for seven to eight minutes. Now you can sprinkle a little powdered sugar on top, but you don't have to. Anyways, when you open these things up, 
They are full of melted caramel and it is my most favorite. The next recipe is our super soft sugar cookies. So first you're gonna add 3 fourths cup of butter and 3 fourths cup of sugar. Now go ahead and blend that together really well. Once that's all blended and mixed well together, you're going to add two eggs, three teaspoons of vanilla extract, and then mix it all together again. Once it's well combined, you're gonna add a half teaspoon of salt, two and a fourth teaspoon of baking powder, and two and a fourth cups of flour. Now this is the last time you have to mix it all together. So once it's all mixed and well combined, you're going to cover it with plastic wrap and stick it in your refrigerator to chill for about 30 minutes. Now it's time to roll the ball. So let me show you just a little trick when you make sugar cookies. Now you can make them with the cookie cutters, that's great, but it's really easy just to make them in balls and then you just press them down a little bit so they'll be complete circles. Now you're gonna bake these at 350 degrees for about eight to 10 minutes. While they're baking, it's time to make the frosting. So you start with two and a half cups powdered sugar, three tablespoons of butter that's softened, and you're gonna mix those together, just the best that you can. Next, you're gonna add three tablespoons of milk and a half tablespoon of vanilla extract. Now blend those very smoothly and softly so you don't get the powdered sugar everywhere and your frosting will become thick and delicious. Now the trick is not to melt your butter, it's to, just to keep it softened and that's how you get the buttercream texture. Then to decorate you just add on your favorite sprinkles. Now these are super soft and delicious and they work with any holiday, you just change up the sprinkles. But I love making them for Christmas. Next recipe is our sugar cookie fruit pizza. Now you're going to use the same sugar cookie recipe as before. The frosting is going to be a little bit different. So you're going to add one package of cream cheese, one eight ounce container of Cool Whip, one cup of powdered sugar, and one teaspoon of vanilla. Now mix that all up. You're going to frost your cookies, and then you're going to put on your favorite fruit. So we have strawberries, blackberries, mandarin oranges, kind of whatever fruit you love, you can put on there. The next recipe is one of our most popular recipes on our blog, it's called Andy's Mint Cookies. Now, you're going to start with one devil's food cake or chocolate food cake mix, two eggs, and then a half cup of oil. And then mix that all together until it is nice and well combined. Then you're gonna roll it into small balls and put it on a cookie sheet. Now these don't spread out very much so you can fit quite a few cookies onto your cookie sheet. Now you wanna make sure you preheat your oven to 350 degrees. You're gonna cook them for six to nine minutes. Now when they're done, you're going to put an Andy's mint cookie on top of each one. This is You wanna do this while they're still hot and then your Andy's mints are going to melt on top. Then you just take a spoon, spread them out a little bit, and they're the perfect little topping for your cookie. All right, my next cookie is called Orange Creamsicle Cookies. Now you're gonna start by adding two and a half cups of flour, three fourths teaspoon of baking soda, and a half teaspoon of salt. And you're gonna mix that together a little bit and set it aside. In another bowl, you're gonna take one cup of butter that's softened and mix it up. Add a half cup of sugar, a half cup of firmly packed brown sugar, and mix it together until it's well combined. On top of that, you're gonna add one egg, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, and go ahead and mix that together too with your sugar. Once that's together, go ahead and add in your flour mixture and then just like we've been doing, mix it till it's well combined. Now here's where it gets delicious. So you're gonna add two tablespoons of orange zest and then throw in two cups of white chocolate chips. You wanna use white chocolate chips because it makes it taste so good. Now once that's all mixed together, your dough is ready. Sometimes I like using these little cookie dough scoops. You don't have to use this, you can roll them up in balls, but this makes it so they're all the same size and they're perfectly formed. Now once 
all filled, you're gonna bake this at 375 degrees for about eight to 10 minutes. Number nine is our pumpkin snickerdoodle cookies. Now I'm gonna start with a half cup of vegetable shortening and then a half cup of butter. These are room temperature so they'll be easy to mix. Then we're gonna add a half cup of light brown sugar and one cup of just normal white sugar. Then you're gonna add one large egg and a three-fourths cup of pumpkin puree. Go ahead and mix that all together until it's nice and well combined. Now you're ready for the dry ingredients. So we're gonna add three and one-fourth cup of flour, two teaspoons of baking powder, and one teaspoon of baking soda. And then lastly, you have a half teaspoon of cinnamon and a half teaspoon of salt. Now you are ready to mix it all together. Now once it gets really thick, I like to move to a spatula just to make sure everything is well combined. Now the dough is pretty sticky, so you can stick it in your fridge for about an hour or you can stick it in your freezer for about mm, 10 minutes. Now while that chills, I have a half cup of sugar and then I have one teaspoon of cinnamon and a half teaspoon of ground ginger. We're going to mix that all together because that's what we're going to roll our dough in. Now you don't have to add the ground ginger. I just love it because I think it goes so well with the pumpkin. So you're going to take each bowl and then roll it in our little mixture and then put it right onto your cookie sheet. Now you're going to preheat your oven to 400 degrees and cook them for seven to nine minutes and they're going to turn out perfect. Now if Santa needs a little healthier cookie at your home, we have our skinny chunky monkey cookies. We're going to start with three bananas that you're just going to mash up. Then add two cups of old fashioned oats, one fourth cup of cocoa, one half cup of applesauce, one fourth cup of creamy peanut butter, four tablespoons of honey, one teaspoon of vanilla, and about a fourth cup of chocolate chips. Those are optional, but I love just a little bit of chocolate chips in there. And as you know, I love my handy dandy cookie scoop. You're gonna scoop these out. You're gonna bake them at 350 degrees for about 10 to 12 minutes. Best part is they're only about 56 calories per cookie. Now if you loved these cookies for Santa and you need some other ideas, we have three ingredient desserts right up there. You can click on that and it will take you to some other awesome ideas. Okay guys, I'll see you later. Bye.